At long last, the Baker Rifle. One's interest in British military muzzleloaders would not be complete without an example of the Baker Rifle. I built mine from a kit supplied by the Rifle Shop of Oklahoma, USA. They are world renowned for providing high quality parts for assembly of complete weapons or repair of the same. I elected to build an example of the 1800 pattern with its distinctive stepped patch box, inside of which is also distinct with its two internal compartments for tools and patches. My 1800 infantry rifle, as it was known then, is one of my most comfortable and natural muzzleloaders to shoot. Its perfectly shaped stock and scroll type trigger guard fit me like a glove. Like most of my British muzzleloaders, I have assembled kit in order to experience shooting it in an historical fashion. This includes a pouch belt with a powder horn sling, a waist belt with its distinctive snake clasp, a small handy powder flask, and a pouch to contain ball, priming, and starter. In addition, there's also a pouch for patches. At the rear is carried a powder horn on its sling for reserve powder, and the main cartridge pouch that I use to hold extra flint, ball, and ancillary equipment. On the front right of the belt, I carry a pouch made to hold the short starter, which itself features a concave starting punch, a steel rod with muzzle protector, and a small brass hammer. For priming, I use a commercial pattern priming flask that dispenses an appropriate amount of 4F powder. Unpatched round ball is carried in a separate compartment at the front to the tune of 30 or so. As was common to all soldiers armed with flintlock weapons, I have a set of tools consisting of a brush and a pick for cleaning and clearing the touch hole and pan. At the front left of the belt, I use a pouch just for patches. The material I use is mattress ticking, and it is lubricated with shortening. As mentioned, the powder horn on its sling at the rear carries a reserve of powder, while the main pouch serves to carry extra ball flint and other tools. The horn with its modern commercial fitting dispenses the 2F powder with ease. For reloading, I carry a small flask that while is a modern commercial pattern, has historical use as its basis. It is filled from the horn as required. The loading of the Baker rifle is similar to other flintlock rifles of the era. The historical way to load with patched ball, known at the time as forced ball, was to first charge the rifle from the flask. It is unclear as to whether this was done with a separate measure, as no examples survive. Following that, a patch was selected and placed at the muzzle. This was followed by a round ball seated on top. Although mallets were initially issued to riflemen, it would appear that their use was somewhat irregular, if at all, at the time. Due to the tightness of this particular bullet, I required the use of a starter, first placing the short, concave punch to get the ball into the muzzle, then using the rod to force it down into the barrel. The heavy rammer was then used, unreversed, to seat the ball on the powder. As mentioned, I use 4F powder to prime from the priming flask. Now this is not historical, but it's quite convenient and in my experience functions quite well. After closing the frizzing, known also as the hammer, the rifle is brought to full cock and the target is covered. The lock is crisp and firing is easy. The complete procedure is quite laborious and requires the use of the standing position with the rifle held between the legs to facilitate the use of both hands. This practice was historical and is well documented. The bullets used for this video were rather too big and not the ones I normally use. Seating them can often be quite difficult.
thanks for watching. I hope that if you have ever wanted one of these historical rifles, this video will have helped convince you of the following. You need a Baker rifle.